Hello again. It's a beautifully sunny day today. So I thought it might be a good idea to have a look at the sun just to see what bits and pieces of physics we might learn simply by looking out of our window or wandering in our garden or maybe out on one of our periods of exercise in the outdoors. There's a lot of physics there. In the house, well, I've done all the filming indoors, so maybe that's enough. This is our nearest star. This is the sun. It's just through my webcam, although I've covered the lens with a suitable filter, which cuts out almost all the light coming through. And we just see this neutral white disc on the screen. There are a few ghostly bits and pieces in the shot as well, but these are optical effects caused by things uh, bouncing around and reflecting um, between the filter and the webcam itself. Let's see what we can find out about the sun. Well, let's have a look at the sun then. Something we're all very, very familiar with, but maybe we can dig beneath the surface a little bit. Uh, it has an anatomy, um, I suppose, similarly to the Earth in some respects. It has a core, which is where all the really violent energetic stuff goes on. This is where all the thermonuclear reactions happen uh, under extreme pressures that create the energy that we all benefit from. Um, outside of that there is something I s loosely called the radiative zone. I'll label all these things later. Um, and then a zone where there's convection taking place. Um, and finally we get a, a thin, um, almost like an atmosphere I suppose, outside, uh, which is called the corona. And there's this very thin surface layer here, of course, is the thing that we actually see. So let's add a few labels and details to this. So this outer region, if we start from the outside and work inwards, uh, is called the corona. This near surface layer is usually referred to as the chromosphere. This is what we associate with the colours that we see. And then in this layer here, it's the convection uh, zone. And we're getting hot and cooler plasma circulating um, around, much as you would expect when we're talking about convection currents in any um, anything that can behave a bit like a fluid. Um, and if you want a little bit more on convection, including in the sun, um, then I suggest you go and have a look at um, the fifth video in this series, because I talk a little bit about convection uh, in there. Further down in, we have something called the radiative zone. And then right slap bang in the middle, uh, as I said earlier, is the core where all the energetic stuff happens. You might be surprised to know that the energy um, from this core, from the thermonuclear reactions, takes more than 100,000 years to get through this radiative zone to the convection zone on the outside. That's because uh, the energy, mostly in the form of photons, light, is getting bounced around uh, so much that it actually takes that long to get out. So what's getting into the convection zone uh, and then out to the outside and affecting the Earth um, in our lifetimes actually started about 170,000 years ago back there in the core. But the distance between uh, 
the sun and the earth is such that, and of course this is ridiculously not to scale, uh, is about 150 uh, million kilometres. All right, and at that sort of distance, the light coming off the sun uh, takes about eight minutes to reach the Earth. So we're actually seeing the sun as it was eight minutes ago at its surface and the energy that created the light that we're um, that we're enjoying began its journey from the core as I said about 170,000 years before that. So we're seeing some quite ancient thermonuclear reactions uh, when we look at this. Okay, so let's go a little bit beyond this now. Let's uh, let's look at the sun um, and the physics associated with it. So the first thing I suppose we could ask ourselves is is what is its colour? Um, perfectly reasonable question. Um, it's actually depends on what time of day you look at it, of course. Uh, when it's high in the sky which uh, it certainly was when I um, filmed the shot that you saw earlier, um, then it looks a sort of, um, I don't know, yellowy white colour. If it's near the horizon, so early morning, late evening, uh, we get a sort of red or red orange look to it. And the reason for that uh, is our atmosphere actually. Um, in the middle of the day when it's higher in the sky we're getting some blue light scattered around in the atmosphere. So we're taking blue from the visible colours of the spectrum and if we take blue away from uh, the spectrum actually what we get left with is something that looks a bit yellowy. Uh, if the sun's coming through more atmosphere, which it certainly is when it's low down um, towards the horizon, morning or evening, then almost all the blue light uh, is removed and actually what we're left is something that looks reddy or orangey. But actually, if we get outside the atmosphere, uh, in terms of what we can see with our eyes, um, the sun will actually look a fairly neutral white colour. And that's almost what you're seeing in the shot through the webcam earlier with the filter that I put on. That filter, by the way, uh, is taking out 99.999% of the light that comes through. Uh, it's a fairly sophisticated astronomical filter uh, and uh, renders it safe for looking at the sun through um, telescopes or binoculars or whatever. Do not do this without appropriate filters of this sort. All right, you probably already know this, uh, but you can cause um, severe damage to the retinas in your eyes uh, and possibly permanent damage that is irreversible. So do take this carefully. So that's the sun in terms of its colour. Uh, what else can we learn um, about the physics of this, um, this fascinating object that we see day in, day out? Uh, at least we hope we see day in, day out. I guess sometimes we don't. Um, well, we can maybe get a few facts and figures into this. So the surface temperature of the sun so the surface, of course, is the thing that we're actually uh, um, looking at. Um, that surface temperature is about five and a half thousand degrees centigrade. So it's fairly hot. Um, surprisingly, perhaps might sound counterintuitive, the corona which is the, um, the sort of atmosphere uh, around the sun. And by atmosphere, I'm, I'm talking very loosely, okay? Um, the sun's atmosphere actually, in one sense, extends all the way through the solar system. 
but we're just looking at the bit close to the sun now. But that has a temperature um, which is actually somewhere in the region of uh, 2 million degrees. Okay, so why then is the atmosphere hotter uh, at a higher temperature rather than the surface? Well, it's actually an unknown question, really. It's still the subject of intense research. It's probably to do with the effect of the sun's magnetic field. Um, but, and again counterintuitively, perhaps uh, the heat energy in this corona is actually relatively small. It's relatively small because the corona uh, is in fact um, quite a low density uh, gas. In fact, it's a plasma, which is a form of gas uh, where the electrons have been stripped off all the, uh, all the gas atoms. So it's relatively low density, which means if you, if you were actually able to stick a thermometer uh, in the corona, um, it, you wouldn't actually measure 2 million degrees um, centigrade because the number of gas, the number of plasma um, particles hitting your th thermometer would be so low, uh, it wouldn't actually heat the thermometer up very much. So it's a rather bizarre thing associated with um, how we define temperature for a gas. And that brings us on, I think, to the, uh, the next bit of really interesting physics, um, which if you're into the kinetic theory of gases and thermodynamics, uh, will tell you that the temperature of gas uh, is proportional to the kinetic energy, in other words, the motion uh, of the gas atoms and the kinetic energy in its turn is proportional to the square of the speed of those um, gas atoms. So the faster they move the more kinetic energy they have the higher the thermodynamic temperature. So in fact this temperature up here is actually telling us um, in very real terms, how fast the gas or the plasma in this corona is moving. It's moving very fast indeed. Well, what else can we, um, can we talk about with respect to the sun? Well, one of the things that's um, uh, tempting, I think, is to look at the different colours of different stars. Um, ours we would characterize this as sort of yellowy white color. Um, there are other stars that are um, uh, that look red or red uh, reddy brown um, and you might have um, you might have heard of brown dwarfs and red giants and so on um, and there are others that have a, a bluish tinge to them uh, and actually um, these are associated with relatively cool stars. Uh, this sort of tinge will be associated with a very hot star. And in fact, even with a pair of binoculars uh, on a, uh, a clear night, um, preferably without a lot of street lighting around, uh, you have a pretty good chance of seeing examples uh, of all sorts of different types of of stars uh, in the night sky. Our sun is a, a fairly middle of the road yellowy white star. Well thanks for watching. This has been the sun. See you next time. Bye.